the meaning of life, the truth, and the promise. Find it today on The Message. Hi everyone, welcome to The Message, a program brought to you by the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ. I'm Brother Johnny Martin. And I'm Brother Glenn Gomez. Did you know, dear friends, that according to the Holy Bible, the Iglesia de Cristo is the religion that has been chosen or elected by God to render Him the true worship and bear witness about Him in our time? Stay with us on The Message and learn more about this from the Holy Scriptures. Welcome back to The Message. In different dispensations of time, since the time of the patriarchs, it has been God's policy to elect or choose people for Himself to serve and worship Him. In ancient times, God called Noah. He and seven others were the only ones saved when God destroyed the earth by means of a great flood. After Noah's descendants turned away, God called and chose Abraham. Then He affirmed His covenant with Abraham's son, Isaac. Then with Isaac's son, Jacob. And then Jacob's 12 sons, who eventually became the nation of Israel. This covenant of God continued for some time with the Israelites. However, Brother Glenn, we've learned from the Bible that ancient Israel was not able to remain as God's chosen people. So God chose again people for Himself, and the ones who received such grace were the members of the Church of Christ, built by our Lord Jesus Christ back in the first century. But after the death of the apostles, the church fell into apostasy as prophesied also by our Lord Jesus Christ. So it did not remain as the true religion that belonged to God. We believe that the Church of Christ that emerged from the Philippines in 1914 is the one chosen and set apart by God during our time. And why are we sure of this? And what is the significance and the purpose of the sacred calling that the Church of Christ has received from God? Well, let us begin our study today, Brother Glenn and dear friends, by reading the prophecy recorded in Isaiah 24, 15. Therefore in the east, give glory to the Lord, exalt the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, in the islands of the sea. What we just read is a Bible prophecy concerning people who would give glory to the Lord. These people would come from the islands of the sea in the east. Now it is our faith that the ones referred to in this prophecy are the members of the Church of Christ that emerged in these last days from the Philippines, which is a country composed of more than 7,000 islands there in the east. And Brother Johnny, why are we very certain about this? According to biblical prophecy, how would those from the east in the islands of the sea give glory to the Lord? And when would be the time that our Lord God would call them? Well, let's read related prophetic statements recorded also in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, 12 and 10. Let them give glory to the Lord and proclaim His praise in the islands. Sing to the Lord a new song, His praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who live in them. Those who are from the islands of the sea in the east will give glory to God by proclaiming His praise and singing to Him a new song. Now, dear friends, notice the time when God would call them. The prophecy says that they would be called from the ends of the earth. Now, Brother Glenn, in previous episodes of this program and even other programs of the Church of Christ, we've studied about the expression ends of the earth. Now, the expression ends of the earth as used in prophecy refers not to place, but to time. And what time? The time when the end of the world is already near. Now, Brother Johnny, our viewers might be wondering, who are these people mentioned in the prophecy? And what right was given to them by virtue of their right to give glory to our Lord God? Well, let's look again at yet another Bible prophecy, this time the one recorded in Isaiah 43, 5 and 6. Fear not, for I am with you, I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Our Lord God identifies those whom He would call from the east, from the ends of the earth, as His sons and daughters. You know, Brother Glenn, God is acknowledging them 
as his children. Now, what part of the east would God start calling his children or his people from the ends of the earth? God said, bring my sons from afar. Thus, the specified place in the east where they would come from is the far east. Now, Brother Johnny, what else proves that the east mentioned in the prophecy is indeed the far east? Well, Brother Glenn, we just read Isaiah 43, 5 and 6 from the New King James Version of the Bible. This time, we're going to be reading the same verses from the James Moffat translation of the Holy Scriptures, and this is stated. From the far east will I bring your offspring. And from the far west I will gather you. I will bid the northlands give them up, and bid the south let go, bringing my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. In this translation of Isaiah 43, 5 and 6, it is specified that God would bring the offspring, whom He also acknowledges as His children, from the far east. It said it right there at the beginning of the verses mm -hmm. that we just read, Brother Glenn, from the far east. So, the people who have divine election in these last days are those who would come from the Far East or the Philippines in fulfillment. Now, Brother Johnny, why are we sure that the Philippines is the country in the Far East where the Church of Christ would emerge in these last days? Is the Philippines really in the Far East? You know, that's a really good question, Brother Glenn. And we're going to get an answer from a book entitled Asia and the Philippines, written by a man named Horacio de la Costa, Page 169, it cannot be without significance that the country which stands almost at the geographical center of the Far East, the Philippines, should also be that in which Christianity has taken the deepest root. A Jesuit priest and historian attest that the Philippines is almost at the geographical center of the Far East. Now, this is one of the proofs that the prophesied people whom God has chosen, who will come from the Far East, at the time referred to as the ends of the earth, are the members of the Church of Christ or Iglesia de Cristo. And what will the members of this church do? Give glory, give praise to the Almighty God. But then again, Brother Johnny, others might say that they too are giving glory to the Lord God. They may say that they have their own religion and that they are also striving to give praise to the Lord God. Why do people need to be a part of the Church of Christ in order to render true praise and glory to our Lord God? We will answer that as the message continues. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone, to the message. Let us continue with our study. We learned earlier from the Bible that the Church of Christ that emerged in the Philippines in 1914 is the religion that has divine election and can thus render glory to God. But the question is this, why are the members of the Church of Christ the only ones who have the right to give glory to our Lord God? Are there no other people in this world who have that right? Well, let us take a look at what the Apostle Paul recorded here in Romans 1, 21. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. According to the Bible, the people of this world have not glorified God. Apostle Paul testified that although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. Now, how can that be, Brother Johnny and dear viewers? Instead of glorifying, worshiping, and serving the Lord God, what have the people of this world worshipped and served? Well, here again is what Apostle Paul said in Romans. We just read 1, 21, now 23 and 25 and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The people of this world have worshipped and served the images of man, birds, four-footed animals and creeping things. Isn't it, Brother Glenn, that this is what we can see people doing even nowadays, even among those who would consider themselves as being Christian. That's true, Brother Johnny. But some might say that when they bow down to graven images, they actually render worship to the Lord God. But is that what our Lord God wants? Does our Lord God accept the kind of worship that the people of this world render to Him 
but perform it before graven images and idols? Well, here is God's clear answer recorded in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. So it is clear from the Bible that God never accepts worship rendered to him by those who worship graven images and idols. Doing such does not give glory to God at all. And that is the reason why God has chosen or appointed his people in these last days, that is, the Church of Christ that emerged from the Philippines. The members of this church are the ones who give glory to the Lord our God. So if people would like to be able to render worship that truly glorifies God, they should be inside the Church of Christ that emerged from the Philippines in 1914. For the members of this church have election from God and are considered by Him as His people. But did you know, dear friends, that this Church of Christ has a sacred duty to fulfill, which makes her distinct from other religions of this world. To know more about this, please stay with us on the message. Dear friends, before we went to break, we made mention about the Church of Christ having a sacred duty to fulfill, which sets her apart from other religions and churches of the world. Brother Johnny, could we please elaborate further on that? Well, yes, we can, Brother Glenn. Now, dear friends, we read earlier what is recorded in Isaiah 43, 5, and 6. Well, let's read those verses again and read as well verses 10 and 11. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. The people whom God recognizes as his children from the Far East, who would appear at the time ends of the earth, have the sacred duty to bear witness to the absolute oneness of God. God said that they would know, believe, and testify that there is no other God but Him. Yes. Now, Brother Glenn, there's something we would like to point out right here. Mm -hmm. The God speaking in the verses is not the Trinity or the triune God. In other words, the true God is not composed of three persons, namely God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's right, Brother Glenn. The mm -hmm. true God here is the Father, according to Isaiah 64, 4 and 8. So besides the Father, there is no other true God. Thus, the people of God in the true religion in the Christian era believe and bear witness to the truth that the Father is the one and only true God. Now, what about this church, the Church of Christ, who is the only one true God whom we believe in and bear witness to? Well, Brother Glenn and dear friends, the true God whom we believe in, worship and bear witness to, is the same God introduced by our Lord Jesus Christ Himself in John 17, 1 and 3. And let's read what our Lord said here. When Jesus had said all this, He raised His eyes to heaven and said, Father, the time has come. Do honor to your Son that your Son may do honor to you. And eternal life means knowing you as the only true God and knowing Jesus, your messenger, as Christ. The verses we just read are the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His prayer to the Father, He declared, Eternal life means knowing you, knowing the Father, as the only true God. Therefore, the Father and no one else is the only true God. That's what was taught by our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what His followers believe. And that's exactly what we bear witness to as members of the Church of Christ or the Iglesia de Cristo, which has divine election. So any religion or church that says that besides the Father, there are others who are to be recognized as God is not the true religion and does not have election from God. If you'd like to know more about the Iglesia de Cristo or Church of Christ, we invite you to attend our worship services in a local congregation nearest you. For more information, please email us at the message at inctvprod.net 
or write us at 770 Airport Boulevard, Burlingame, California, 94010. You can also visit us online at incmedia.org. From all of us here at The Message in our San Francisco Bay Area studios, we want to thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again next time. But before we go, please join us in a short prayer. Our merciful and almighty God, once more we call upon your name. Yes, Father. And we thank you with all of our hearts. Yes, Father. For granting us this wonderful opportunity once again. Yes, Father. To share your message of salvation with all of those who are watching this program. Amen. Dear God, we have shared with them your words. Yes, Father. About how the Church of Christ is the religion that belongs to you. Yes, Father. And how you, Father, are the one and only true God. Yes, Father. We pray that your grace and blessing will be upon all who have heard your message today. Yes, Father. And may you touch the hearts and lives of all who've received your message. Yes, Father. So that your message will be embraced with faith and love. Yes, We Father. can be together inside your church to serve you and glorify you and receive the promise of salvation. Amen. May your blessing continue to be upon this program yes, so Father. the administration can continue to utilize it yes, in spreading Father. your message of salvation for more people. Amen. We believe, God, you've given us your blessings. Yes. For we pray all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. This has been a production of the Iglesia Ni Cristo Television Network.